Hello and welcome back. Today we are continuing our lecture series on the 1920s uh, and more specifically we're going to be talking about the Scopes Monkey Trial. Uh, the Scopes Monkey Trial is about whether or not we are going to teach the scientific view of evolution in our public schools or whether public schools are going to be forced to teach the religious view of creationism that you know god created adam and eve and all human life uh came from there so that's what the monkey trial is about to give a little bit of uh, background, uh, you know, we had talked in previous lectures about kind of the conflicts that are brewing in America during the 1920s. And so uh, the Scopes Monkey Trial is really a product of those conflicts, uh, most more specifically the conflict between this kind of modern urban America, uh, you know, the, the America that's living in the cities uh, that tend to embrace more scientific thinking, uh, but also embrace these things that rural uh, conservative America, uh, you know, doesn't like. And that's, uh, you know, the gambling and the drinking, uh, the jazz clubs, uh, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, scandalous flappers uh, that you see right here. Uh, these are examples of flappers. We'll talk more about them uh, because they're a very important part of the 20s uh, in a later lecture. And so, uh, you know, rural America is looking at urban America and they're, you know, uh, they, they see the decline in American morality. They see all the casual dating, the drinking, uh, the partying. And, uh, you know, they're really concerned about, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the, impact that that's going to have on morality. And so uh, the rural America is going to kind of reject that uh, lifestyle and, and are going to want to promote more uh, traditional uh, religious morality in America. And they're going to do that through uh, what's known as fundamentalism. Uh, and fundamental, fundamentalism is just a strict literal, literal interpretation of the Bible, uh, which means that every word in the Bible is true. Now, you know, most religious people today uh, are not fundamentalists, right? They don't believe uh, that every word of the Bible is true, that, you know, the Bible is a series of allegories or stories to try and teach morality, that there's truth in it. But but it's not exactly entirely every word true. Uh, but in the 1920s, you know, the, uh, you know, Americans, religious Americans are looking at kind of the cesspot that is the cities and they're thinking, oh my God, like we, you know, that this is, this is awful. This is the decline of, uh, of America. And so they're going to kind of retreat into religion and, uh, you know, and fundamentalism, they believe has uh, the, uh, the answers that they need. And so, uh, and, and, you know, the, the event that is going to best encapsulate this conflict between, you know, urban scientific America and rural religious America is going to be the uh, fight over evolution, right? The, uh, you know, urban Americans and the Americans living in cities are going to be promoting uh, the theory of evolution, you know, Charles Darwin's theory that, you know, all life has evolved over millions of years from, you know, simpler life forms. Uh, they call it the monkey trial because, you know, the suggestion is that humans came from monkeys millions of years ago. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's going to be in direct conflict with the religious Americans that are going to say, no, we reject that. Uh, we believe what the Bible tells us that, you know, God created Adam and Eve, and that's where human life came from. And so uh, the, the two are going to uh, collide in the uh, Scopes monkey trap. Now, uh, the, the kind of myth is that, you know, before the, the Scopes trial, uh, you know, John Scopes is this, uh, you know, biology teacher in uh, Dayton, Tennessee, and he's going to teach a, a evolution. And, and, you know, the kind of myth is that that's the first time that that had been taught in public school. And that's actually not true. By the 1920s, many schools were teaching evolution, right? Uh, American society in general, most people, uh, you know, have, uh, you know, believe in, in evolution by, by the 1920s. 
You know, so much so uh, that it's not only, uh, you know, believed scientifically, uh, people have the theory has evolved into social Darwinism, uh, which is kind of the idea that, you know, not only do animals uh, evolve through the idea of survival of the fittest, but so do uh, cultures. You know, uh, Hitler is going to use it by the, the 1940s and 50s to, uh, you know, promote, you know, all kinds of racist ideas. Uh, and so, you know, the evolution has got into the the mainstream there's all kinds of people that uh believe it and there's all kinds of teachers that are teaching it uh but the fundamentalists reject that and they really do believe that you know if we want to get back to a more moral america we need to do it through religion and if evolution is allowed to be taught in schools then those kids uh, will grow up re rejecting religion and you know the the future of america you you can always kind of predict what the future is going to uh, of america is going to be by looking at what's being taught in schools and so uh fundamentalists are going to want to reject evolution and uh promote uh <clears throat> creationism uh so you know that that next generation of kids uh grow up in in their minds to be more moral uh you know i don't know that morality really has anything to do with one or the other uh but that's their belief <clears throat> and so the creationists are going to uh score a pretty big victory in tennessee in 1925. uh the tennessee legislature is going to make it uh, essentially illegal in the state of tennessee for teachers to teach uh, essentially anything other than creationism and so uh you know all the teachers in tennessee uh you know are going to be banned from teaching uh, evolution all right so the you know the 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 creationists the fundamentalists uh, get a pretty big victory there now, uh, since we're talking about creationists, uh, we really have to talk about the, the guy that ends up becoming the spokesperson for creationism, and it's this guy right here, William Jennings Bryan. Uh, William Jennings Bryan is probably the most important American that you've never heard of. Uh, he is, uh, you know, he was kind of the, the leader of the populist movement, uh, a movement that was uh, designed to kind of uh, regulate big business. To the populist movement was uh, famous for trying to limit uh, government, uh, you know, corruption and, you know, uh, eventually became the, uh, you know, the very successful progressive movement. Uh, William James Bryan gives a very famous uh, speech called the Cross of Gold speech, where he talks about the plight of farmers and how important farmers are that, you know, all of society fails, essentially, if farmers fail, and that, uh, you know, farmers need uh, more access to money if they're ever going to uh, survive. So it's a really a speech about the gold standard. Uh, you know, we can talk more about that in, uh, in other lectures. Uh, but Either way, William Jennings Bryan is super famous, very popular. He uh, is a lawyer and he is, uh, you know, ran for president uh, several times, never won, but got, you know, a significant portion of the vote. Uh, and he finds himself as, you know, he's a deeply religious man. And he uh, finds himself kind of as the spokesperson for uh, the teaching of creationism uh, and is really, you know, on a campaign in America to uh, keep evolution out of our uh, public schools. So that's kind of set the stage for what's going to happen in Dayton. So what actually happens? What, you know, what are the uh, events leading up to the trial? Well, uh, you know, it, you know, it really, the, the Scopes trial, and it's named the Scopes trial after John Scopes. Uh, he's the uh, biology teacher in Dayton, Tennessee. Uh, you know, it, like the the story and the truth are kind of uh, two different things. Uh, you know, it's not this spontaneous event like the teacher just teaches evolution and you know he gets uh, you know uh, fined and you know the case makes its way to court. Uh, it doesn't really happen like that. It's actually pre-planned. Uh, the city leaders in Dayton, Tennessee, Dayton is like, has been slowly dying and uh, they're looking for a way to be able to bring some commerce back to the city. And they see an opportunity uh, of, to gain national attention by challenging the Tennessee law that says that you can't teach evolution in schools. They, they know that when this gets challenged, it'll be national news and it'll bring all kinds of attention to Dayton. And so they approach John Scopes, who's a biology teacher at the local high school, 
And Scopes already, he, he's decided already before this trial that he doesn't actually want to be a teacher anymore. Uh, and so <clears throat> he's the perfect candidate to challenge this law because, you know, he's, he, he will be, you know, uh, and get in trouble for this uh, can, and can get fired. But because he doesn't really want to be a teacher anymore, he doesn't mind. And the city leaders are going to convince him uh, to teach a lesson on, uh, you know, a, Darwinism, natural selection, and evolution. And so uh, Scopes essentially agrees, and it's all set up from the very beginning. They tell the cops that he's going to teach this uh, this lesson ahead of time. So it's not like they found out through the grapevine. Uh, the cops are uh, informed ahead of time. The press is informed ahead of time. And, uh, you know, uh, Scopes goes in, he teaches the lesson uh, about uh, evolution and, uh, you know, natural selection and survival of the fittest and uh, teaches the, the lesson and then gets, the, you know, the police come, they arrest him and uh, fine him for teaching. Now, this isn't a, a, like a huge deal. The, the fine is a relatively small fine. It's not like he's going to be going to jail for years, uh, but it gives uh, the uh, pro-evolution people an opportunity uh, to uh, take this case to court and challenge uh, whether or not the, the law banning the teaching of evolution uh, is, uh, is justified. And so, uh, you know, he teaches the lesson, uh, becomes a, gets arrested for it, and uh, that is going to uh, precipitate a, a trial over uh, this uh, particular event. Now, the, the reality is here, you know, a lot of people think that the uh, pro-evolution people win this case. They, they actually don't. They don't win the case. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. He broke the law, and so you can challenge it all you want. The law is clear. Now, whether or not the law is a good law is a totally different question. And that's where the evolutionary, uh, you know, the pro-evolutionary science people will win. Uh, they actually lose in court, but they're going to, spoiler alert, uh, they're going to win in the court of public opinion. So uh, the trial gets going, and like I said, it's a huge media event. Uh, you know, hundreds of reporters are going to show up in Dayton, Tennessee, uh, and the town totally makes a show of it, right? Uh, they're going to uh, essentially, you know, they're going to provide entertainment outside of the courthouse. Vendors are going to be selling all kinds of souvenirs, like little monkeys and, and things like that, uh, to, to kind of profit off all the attention that they're uh, that they're getting and they're getting I mean this becomes like the story uh, and two sides are gonna line up uh, we're gonna get two of the most uh, you know important uh, lawyers in the country uh, on uh, either side of this court case first of all William Jennings Bryan who's gonna represent uh, Tennessee so he's representing the law that bans evolution right he's a creationist he doesn't want to talk uh, William Jennings Bryan is just, it, he's devoutly religious, and so he's trying to defend his religion. On the other side, we're going to have one of America's uh, best attorneys ever, uh, a guy by the name of Clarence Darrow, uh, who is going to agree to represent John Scopes uh, for free. So, you know, two of the most uh, famous attorneys, two of the best attorneys in uh, the country are set to uh, face off over whether or not evolution should be taught. And by the way, these two guys, they go at it in court. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, Clarence Darrow puts William Jennings Bryan uh, uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, questions him in court. And so, you know, puts him on the stand, uh, which is like a weird thing to do. You would put an attorney on, on the stand. He justifies it by saying William James Bryan is a expert in religion uh, and questions him uh, about, uh, you know, kind of uh, what Darrow believes to be some, um, some inconsistencies within the Bible. And so, you know, these guys like go at it hard at, in court, but in reality, they're, they're best friends. These guys, uh, you know, uh, they have totally different views on uh, all kinds of issues and particularly this big one, uh, yet they still remain best friends. And, and I, you know, I have to just interject this here. Uh, this is what politics is missing in, you know, uh, you know, the, the 
2020s. Uh, you know, it's my side versus your side. And if you don't agree with me, you must be evil and we can't be friends. And, you know, I won't associate with somebody who thinks something differently than me. Uh, I, I would suggest to you that that is one, it's intellectually dishonest. Nobody's always right. So it's important to always have people around you that have differing views. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, I, I long for a time when we can be like these two guys where, you know, we can have very strong political views. Uh, we can have very strong personal views, cultural views, and and understand that just because somebody disagrees with me doesn't mean uh, that they're a bad person. So uh, the two sides are lined up. Uh, they're going to have their trial. Uh, you know, uh, William Jennings Bryan is going to make the argument that if evolution wins, Christianity dies, essentially. Uh, you know, if kids aren't being taught the Bible, that they'll reject religion. Uh, you know, clearly that's hyperbole, but, you know, uh, he... He, he believes it anyway. Uh, Darrow on the other side uh, essentially says Scopes really isn't on trial. Civilization is on trial and that if we were going to survive, we have to embrace science. Uh, that's hyperbolic as well. You know, both sides are exaggerating uh, pretty heavily, but, you know, that's what they're trying to do, trying to convince the jury. Uh, trial goes on. Uh, the judge is... Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, the, the judge is pretty biased here. Uh, you know, he only lets one of Darrow's experts uh, actually testify. Uh, you know, and so uh, the uh, they're, they're making the case really hard for the pro-evolutionary uh, people. Uh, when the case is over, the jury, uh, you know, deliberates uh, to decide, you know, whether or not Scopes is guilty. It takes them only like 10 minutes. Uh, and uh, they determine that Scopes is guilty. And, you know, in reality, when you're just looking objectively at the law, he is guilty. Uh, so, you know, that's a, that's a pretty easy decision to make. Now, the larger question is whether or not the law is a good law in the first place. So, uh, Scopes is guilty. Uh, you know, he's fined a hundred dollars for breaking the law and, uh, you know, essentially, uh, it's over, uh, at least the case is over. Now, most people will, uh, will tell you that the pro, uh, you know, evolutionary science people won the Scopes trial. Uh, that's not true. They did not win it. Uh, William Jennings Bryan won the case. Uh, creationists won the actual case. But Clarence Darrow and the pro-evolutionary science people won public opinion. And, uh, you know, even though they lost the case, what will happen uh, is within a year, the Tennessee Supreme Court will overturn the conviction. That's on a procedural issue. Uh, and uh, the public will, you know, really start to recognize that you know, th this idea that we shouldn't teach evolution because it will kill Christianity, uh, the, the American people will reject that. And they'll think, you know, we can have both. You know, science can explain the things that religion can't, and religion can explain the things that science can't. And, uh, you know, uh, what will happen is because public opinion turns uh, towards recognizing that evolution is the, uh, the currently the best way to explain, you know, kind of you know, how we've become the way we've become, uh, schools will embrace that. And that's why today evolution is taught in, you know, as every public school in the, the country. Uh, you know, I, I don't know of any holdouts. And so uh, this will, uh, you know, it kind of, uh, you know, uh, be symbolic of this conflict between, you know, uh, this, you know, modern urban America and the more religious uh, rural America. Okay, uh, that concludes our uh, lecture on the Scopes trial. I appreciate your time and I will see you again shortly.